it's Mary, Mary here. Look, look, my two dogs are here. That the schnauzer is Martha, and the little one wagging her tail is Maddie. Hi, Maddie. Okay, all right. I wanted to quickly get this up here because Carolyn's going on an interview tomorrow. Good luck, Carolyn. I know you're gonna do wonderful. In the words of my brother, Scott, which I'll clean up. My brother, Scott's a sergeant, and he made me laugh so much when I went on an interview once, and that is this thought. Do you think when you go on that interview, Carolyn, that the boss is going to tell you what a total jerk he is? I mean, can you imagine an interview? Just imagine an interview where the, where the boss told you how it was. <laughs> So you just think of that, and I want you to think of my brother who, when I'm telling him, you know, yeah, my girlfriend Carolyn's going on an interview, and he's like, Carolyn, you got a girlfriend named Carolyn? Is she blonde? And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah, she is. And he's like, she, or maybe I said, but she's married as the conversation progressed. And, you know, then the, the clock stopped at that point, but that should make you laugh too. My idiot brother is like, she married? Who's, who's Carolyn? <laughs> and, um... Of course now, thank you, Diva. If I had a 55-year-old good-looking jet pilot, I wouldn't know what to do with him. So that is just so flattering that you would think of me. Thank you so much. <sighs> Tell him I no longer shoot YouTube videos, though, because I couldn't handle the pressure knowing that this man is uh, watching my YouTube videos. So <laughs> Let's proceed. So, Carolyn, I wanted to address... I, I wanted to give you well wishes for your interview. And then I also want to answer a question for Penny about public speaking. But first, before I forget, I saw the movie A Journey of a Thousand Steps with Helen Mirren, I think. I think it's going to win the Oscars, the Academy Awards. It's the best movie I've seen in a long time. So let me know what you all think of it. And let me know if I'm cracking up because I think I heard people crying in the audience. I know I was from the get-go pretty much. So just let me know what kind of reaction you had so I can gauge true so I can gauge truly how nuts how nuts I'm getting. Right, Martha? Wait. Wait. You don't give me kisses. Only Maddie does. So Ah, uh, someone needs attention. See, she's picking up the stress, too, because tomorrow's my first day on the job, and it's a sales position. It's a little confu <laughs> It's a little confusing because when the recruiter said, called initially, she was under the impression, too, that they had a different position for me, and they wanted to see if I was still interested in their company. And then as he described the position to her later, it was determined that it's the same sales position. So it's 100% cold calling. It's I'm looking forward to it because it's like five miles away from my house. And the owner is semi-retired. And my experience, they the about to retired are the best bosses on the planet. They have a lot of knowledge that they're willing to share. So that's good. For Penny, I want to let you know my key to public speaking. I used to give speeches. I had a 16 state territory. I even, probably because I'm the only dummy who didn't realize that we're not insured when we fly to. At that point in my career, there was no insurance when you flew to American Samoa, a flight directly from Hawaii to American Samoa. So I have a lot of public speaking in front of potentially hostile environment. And here's one key. Contact with every single person in the audience if possible. I shook every single person's hand, learned their name. Sometimes I learned something about them if they showed up early and I'd incorporate it into the seminars. My typical class size was uh, maybe 25 most, at the most, maybe a hundred, maybe a little more than a hundred people in a, in a, in a class. So there, so there's that get to know the people. They will like your subject more if they know that you care about them. 
Most important, I think, for it depends on what kind of personality type you are, but most important when you're speaking in front of the public is your message. You need them. You need to educate them. They're paying you or there's something at stake here. Like it's important, the message. So the message is more important, I would tell myself, than my fear of failure, what I look like, blah, 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 blah. It's my job to deliver the message. So that alleviates a whole lot of pressure. I mean, this is really weird because I don't, I know, um, it's it's odd. I don't see myself as the best, (laughs) most (laughs) spiritual person on YouTube. But by golly, uh, the Catholic faith has given me at least a good foundation when you subtract. I mean, don't throw the baby out with the wash. Wonderful hospitals, education, whatever. I mean, good, solid, biblical foundation. If you know, you know, you subtract maybe some of the dogma. (laughs) Anyways, this is what makes me laugh. Penelope. I could never imagine an audience of naked people. I just couldn't do it. But what I could imagine was Jesus in the audience. For some reason, (laughs) just thinking, well, gosh, that's weird coming from you, considering, you know, what a knucklehead I am. That uh, It's just funny. It's like, what would the audience think if they knew Jesus was in one of those seats? (laughs) And then, I don't know, it was just comforting to me. I mean, it's not plausible that I could transport my brothers, my mother, my father, my friends into the audience, but it it was plausible to me that Jesus is with you. So that's what I did. And I, I did well during these seminars, just phenomenal critiques. Um, like not one critic in the house ever. And we were it was mandatory to be your information ranked and whatever personality and stuff. So that's what worked for me. And boy, did I stink up the audience the first few times. Yes, I did. I even, um, on the way to my first seminar, I think it was in Iowa, I crashed my car. Totaled. I mean, I walked away and then I did the seminar the next day, but that's the kind of person I am. So um, I just, you know... If anything, just, you know, maybe let me know if those tips help, okay? So we got you covered, Carolyn. We got you covered, Penelope. Is there anything or anyone else before I sign off? Because I don't know when I'll be be able to do more, more videos. Um, also, you should know that, um, yeah, been under a lot of stress lately. One of my mother's dearest friends said something. Not derogatory or anything, but just something that she called the next morning to apologize for sounding preachy. And I told her that it's okay. I'm so glad she has, that my mom has a friend like you. But at the same time, you're only breathing right now because the Holy Spirit came upon me when you said that. So that's caused... um, some tension. And when my brother, I know my brother knows about the situation because of one word he said to me during a phone conversation today, which was nurturing. And I want you to know what that little, what he's done to me today. Um, so we're talking about Carolyn and your job interview. And all of a sudden he's like, did you talk to mom today? Call her cell phone. She's in the hospital. I'm like, what? He's like, he's like, yeah, her heart stopped for a couple minutes. It didn't, you guys. But you should know that the last time her, she was in the hospital, her appendix burst. And at the same time, the ER found problem with her heart and they didn't know what to treat. So they let the appendix burst, take its course, monitored, but they took care of her heart. And she has a pacemaker. Recently, because of the pain in her knee and her hip, she was to get an MRI, but... Someone caught it. If you get an MRI and you have a pacemaker, it's end end of the game. That pacemaker flies out. So he's letting me think that today she's in the hospital and not telling me because back when her appendix burst and she had the heart, the pacemaker put in, 
No one, my mom told my brothers, don't tell Mary Lynn I'm in the hospital. She gets, you know, too upset. <laughs> and the only way I knew she was okay is that I called the hospital and they're like, and the password to her room, she used my dog's name. So this is like the crazy, crazy Irish family I come from. And, and this is what's going on. So I thank you so much for watching and and listening to my tale of woe, you all have a great day and I will uh, let you know how the job's going.